Right, oh, this video is just about to start for you, and I tell you what, it starts with a bang, and uh, you're not going to believe it. But anyway, the footage is rough, so sorry about that, but we didn't have time. So I hope you enjoy it, and uh, if you can, jump over to Patreon and support the channel. Everyone that's already on there, cheers, thanks for, for supporting me. And uh, I really do appreciate it. It's it's no small thing, and it really is helping uh, the channel do what it does. And at the moment, it's nearly producing a video a week. So I hope you can appreciate that extra content. Uh, we've got Anthony from Canberra, <laughs> walking in in the dark. Indeed. How are you enjoying it so far? It's good. Yeah. The, uh, the trail is easy. Once you're off piste, there's a bit more work to it. Yeah. Well, we should get back on it, but I just saw another reflector, so. Yeah, right. Should be right. No, it's good. The uh, evening walk in just adds a bit of spice to the whole adventure, I think. That's what it is. You said it right there, the adventure. Always second guess your technology. Advenza Maps told me that camp was about 300 meters back the way we come and didn't look feel right to me so I kept going and anyway found me a little campfire Reload, reload. Starting to go a bit wonky. Can you believe that we haven't even left camp? <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey? How good's that? <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> well, I'm going to unpack up my sleeping bag the next. I'm taking a shot without having thought about it. So I'm pretty sure I got him in, the, in that shoulder. You got him in the heart, he's down. Yeah. Good stuff. So I'm shaking. <laughs> so am I. You can sort of say, <laughs> look at the boat. <laughs> oh. So here we are. We've had brekkie in bed. Oh. We walked in last night. We got set up. We had brekkie in bed. And I was just sort of waiting for Anthony to get his gear out so I could sort of pack my gear away. And I, la I actually, in hindsight, thought to myself, I should just keep an eye out up there. Anyway, I was looking up there and I went, that's a deer rubbing a tree, like 80 metres away. <laughs> so I raced in underneath the tarp, which is still set up. I said, Anthony, where's your ammo? Where's your gun? There's a, there's a deer up there. We've got to shoot it. Oh no, did you believe me straight away? Oh, I, saw, I saw you come in in a rush and I was thinking you were thinking just getting the rifle out to clean the tent, right? And then it's like, dear, okay. And thankfully, I knew exactly where my ammo was oh. and we were ready to go. And so, yeah, I'll be, I watched this stag roaming a tree 80 metres from camp and yeah, you, I think you put a real good shot on it. I saw him go wonky before, so. Yeah. We'll, um, we'll find him in a minute. We'll find him in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Awesome. That is incredible. I don't know how big he is, but he looked pretty good just before you shot. Yeah. I think he's in the mid-twenties. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I would have said maybe 20, but yeah. there, there you go. But, yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm no expert. This is my first go, so. Well. Fantastic. Yeah. What a way to start the morning. <laughs> I wish I wasn't shaking. <laughs> there you go. That was just excellent. All right. Hello. Not yet. That's where he was when you shot. Uh, usually takes them a little bit to start, unless you've got a pass through, which.
Fuck it, there's no more pants on, really. <laughs> Don't touch my boots. Right, eh? First drop. Oh, yeah, nice. Alright. A little bit more there. Look at that, bubbles. Bubbles, lung. bubbles mean lung, so we are good. Well, we are about 50 metres from where we first started tracking, is where we're starting to get blood. Bloody on the trail. Yeah, tracking blood, not tracks now. Expect you to see him go down a bit. Uh, when I saw him get the wobbly boot, I thought he's in trouble. He didn't go far after we saw him wobble, did he? No. Right, I go and uh, poke him into bang stick, mate. Pretty sure he's done. But... If you like that one chambered, and if, if he moves, put it into him. Wow. I, him. I can tell he's dead. But... <laughs> it's quite a nice deer, mate. Yeah, nice shot. Very wide. Very awesome. Perfect shot. Pass through and everything. Yeah, happy with that. It's a wonder it didn't start bleeding quicker. It's amazing how much their uh, fur can, or well, their hair can soak up that blood. So, 708, 139 grain, GMX. Did the job. Yeah, very nicely. Is yeah. that 80 metres, I think? 80 metres, I reckon. Yeah. 80 metres and probably... Yeah. <laughs> that uphill angle had me for a bit. Was... Yeah. yeah. That was good. All worked well. First morning, probably 15 minutes after light. Hey, it looks like he's got a bit of mud on his front front legs there, so he's been doing a bit of wallowing, yeah. a bit of running. Nice deer, mate. Nice, we can see the tent. <laughs> can we? <laughs> Literally, there's the fly right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, just there. That's good going. All right, oh, here we go. We've got Anthony and his stag. I'm going to call this camp stag, I think. So, as we talked about earlier, we walked in last night, got set up, and uh, we just had Brecky in bed and slowly packing up, and I'd sort of taken all my gear out from underneath the fly while Anthony was mucking around packing his stuff away. And I happened to look up on the hill, and there was a big body up on the hill and a heap of bushes getting thrashed around, so I knew it was a stag. And uh, so I raced into Anthony and said, do you know where your bullets are? And he's like, yeah. I said, you need to get them out because there's a deer on the hill. So he, luckily he had them pretty handy and we shoved a couple in the magazine and came out and rested on a tree. And anyway, I'll let Anthony tell you how the rest of it happened. Yeah, look, it was amazing. So we're coming out of the tent, figuring out which tree to look at, looking up the hill. So really steep incline up the hill. I haven't taken a lot of shots like that in my life. And he was coming down through scrub, and at first I could see plenty of body, but not really his shoulder, there, no vitals. And I'm sort of getting nervous, he's coming down the hill. And then he came down the hill and then propped and sort of ran back across the contour. And I just had a, enough to see his shoulder nice and clear. His bum was covered and his antlers were in the, in the shrubs. So I just squeezed it off and 
hit him really nicely, really happy with the shot. You know, I took a little bit of time perhaps, but got there in the end. Yeah. And just the, the side of him running off, like you could see he was hit, and he got a bit wobbly about 30, 40 metres into the run. And then we found him maybe 20, 30 more metres further on down the track, yeah. right on the game trail. Mm. Bundled up nicely. So tell me, how, how many Samba have you seen? Uh, I've now seen, well, I've, there's the two I nearly hit on a motorcycle a couple of years ago, and there was one last night coming in, and then this guy. <laughs> so two, two while actually getting out for a hunt, yep. and I've now shot one of them. That's good. And uh, this year you only started deer hunting yeah. recently? Yeah, no, this year I've, I've had uh, four hunts for four deer for four shots, so I've done all right. You have. And you got a, a Samba stag to take home with, with you all the way back to Canberra. Yeah. No, and a nice one too. Very happy. Very happy. What yeah. a way to start the week or well, the three days. Right? Yeah. Where so, do you go from here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so he's all covered in wet mud. So there's obviously a wallow up on the hill here somewhere. And um, he's got a little bit of stink about him. But um, yeah, Anthony's made a perfect lung shot on him there. Passed through with the 7 mil 08. And um, the stag, yeah, he looks like he's just, just maybe a touch under 26, but nice and heavy, beautiful tines, a big mature deer, so a nice one to take, especially for your first stag. Oh, yeah. Just fantastic. So, I can pull the trigger on a 20 inch thing. Yeah. No problem at yeah, all. Yeah, no, I knew he was a bit better than 20 when, when you said, oh, I think he's about 20. I said, no, no, mid 20s, mid 20s. So, <laughs> anyway. Fantastic. Um, I think we'll spend the rest of the day. Yeah, we'll deal with him and him up a bit and go and find that wallow. Yeah, go and have a look. So here's the marks from Anthony Stag where he took off at the shot. And that's sort of where we were camped last night. And shot him from where my bag's leaning up against that tree. I'm gonna walk back out there later on in three days time. Bringing him off the hill for the last time. A hundred yards back to camp is going to be a struggle, isn't it? Oh, I'm struggling. This is my platypus um, water filtration system. Runs off gravity. It's down there's your filter. And it's got... I adapted it to this quick hitch, which most um, water bladders have now. So that's a different brand. That's a Hydra Pack. That's a platypus. But yeah... I found one of those that I had spare and it just clips into there. You can sort of see it running. Running through. It's supposed to do about two and a half litres a minute. It's no physical effort. So. It, um, I've seen the ones where you scrunch up the bag and push through the thing. Too much effort. This thing, gravity's working for you. And, uh, yeah got this one hanging in a whole preach right next to camp so that's pretty cool what if you have the bottom bladder squeezed out no air left in it it'll just fill it to the to the brim and then you just disconnect and done but if you've got air in there it'll you can't get the air out obviously so just got to remember to have no air in in that bottom bladder and it'll run in there fine right i just want to do a quick talk on this white river knife that i've um, been given review by h and Firearms in sale. Um, totally impressed with how it holds an edge. Um, I d haven't really spent a lot of time taking that uh, factory shoulder off, but I've, I've sort of lessened the angle on it a little bit and given it a good sharpen up, and it quite easily shaves your arm once you've got that edge on there and give it a little bit of a steel up. But not just that, it's, um, it's perfectly balanced. It really feels good in the hand. The grip's perfect, um, you know, flipping it over the other way, you got your little thumb shelf here as well, so it can't slip off onto your blade. Uh, they've really thought about it a fair bit. I suppose it's just a typical drop point um, style, but yeah, 
I lost it in the bush for 14 days and all that happened to it was some sort of a rodent came along and had a bit of a chew on the leather ear, which you'll see in photos. Um, and it also comes with a little flint there so you can light yourself a fire by scratching that off as well. But and a good, um, I think it's a kydex, that material, yeah. um, for the scabbard. So, and it really locks in there nice and solid. So pretty awesome bit of kit. They, they do have some other styles and probably more suitable for what the sort of hunting I'm doing, but they didn't have one in the shop at the time. So I just took this one for a run and I tell you what, I'll be looking at their backpacker, I think it's called, uh, a fair bit lighter and just a nice little blade, which is all you'll need for doing this sort of stuff. But today it ripped the, uh, the cape off this deer, took the back legs out, back straps, eye fillets, took the heart out and it has lost its edge, but um, it won't take much at home to sort of bring that back up and she'll be back ready to go for the next year. So if you're interested, jump into H&S Firearms in Sale, check out the White River Knives. I think the distributor's called Wild Game Australia. So fairly new, I think, made in the USA. From what I can see, really well built and uh, good steel and holds an edge really well. We've come back up to the where we shot from, where, we, where he was standing when uh, Anthony shot. And we're just going to backtrack him just to learn a little bit about what he was up to. And because he was covered in mud, we thought we might find a wallow. So pretty sure we found it already. So it looks like he was having a wallow while we were having breakfast. Can't quite see the tarp still, but it's just there. Yeah. We wouldn't be any more than 100 metres no, from, from where he is. Mud all over that tree there from the wallow. Yeah, so we'll walk in on this wallow. There's all this mud all over the log here. Yeah. So that'd be one. A preach. Look at the mud he's been putting all up and down the tree there. So are these get printed by multiples or does he kind of hold this as a part of his rough behaviour? No, uh, this is um, shared by everybody. Yeah. So he wasn't in this one here this morning because that's clear. So it's cl quite the spar bath, isn't it? So yeah, you'd see him in there. You'd only see his antlers sticking yeah. out. So we've basically been backtracking this stag, not footprint for footprint, but we've been following his old sign from a few days old to probably a week old. And we found the wallow, and um, we've just come up into the head of this little gully here and found his bed so it's got mud in it so obviously he's been doing a bit of rutting and um, you can clearly see footprints and he's cleared out all the leaves here got mud all over these dried mud all over these leaves here same color as the wallow so what's interesting is he's got a couple other spots that he could have bedded down there's a little flat spot there Another one just there, but this one here is clearly his favourite. Undisturbed and keeping his routine, he'd probably in this most days until something changes. We didn't do any good yesterday afternoon. We only spotted one small stay, about 16, 18 inches. Had the perfect bloody afternoon for glass, and we had a big face to look at, didn't we? Yeah, it was great. But it was we, just a lovely, relaxing afternoon. <laughs> spent, spent hours looking and did no seeing. We didn't see a, another animal apart from that one stay. And that was pretty early in the afternoon, didn't we? Yeah, three. Yeah, I three o'clock. And uh, it was quite warm. So, anyway, we'll... Um, Gonna have another crack this morning. We're gonna do a bit more walking today. Right, I've uh, just done a river crossing barefoot, and the river is up quite a fair bit, so she's full width. We've got Anthony about ready to attempt to come across, but he's got crocs, so he'll be laughing. It's freezing cold.
We've um, just bumped a big stag and uh, we got honked at higher up and I was just sort of moseying up to sort of try and get some glass on the deer honking at us and I just looked down and he's clearing 250 yards away there's this bloody big antler hanging out of the bush and uh, yeah, I've got a quick bit of footage of him but big body, long antlers but yeah Anyway, we're going to let him settle, see if we can catch up with him a bit later on. But here's me uh, homemade energy bars. Tell you what, they're the bomb. Get on to it. That's a different deer, I reckon. That's its calf. I think there's another one there. This little stack there now. Just coming across to where the hike was here. I see that dead tree. Face that dead tree. Yeah. Looking at the same thing as me. Yeah, I'm video it. He's a two year old or something, is he? Yep.
Warte. Well, we just had a pretty productive morning. Saw, um, I think we saw eight all up. One really good stag, and we never caught up to him. Um, but then, yeah, the days are so long now, we managed to come back to camp and actually have a bit of a nap, and uh, rained a little bit. It's really dulled right off, so we're about to head out for the afternoon, so didn't really see much yesterday afternoon, so I'm hoping this cooler weather sort of drags him out of the bush a bit. If you think this is acceptable by leaving it at a fire, you shouldn't be allowed in the bush. And I'm pretty sure someone will know who did this because someone will know exactly which camp this is. So what, what, what we've got left here is probably going to weigh less than half a kilo. I see the dead head over there that you've skull cut. You've carried out more than half a kilo's worth of antlers. Carry the fucking rubbish out. I'll do it for you. Right, I just want to give a massive thank you to everyone that's joined up the Patreon. Um, massive support that I'm getting. Totally humbled by it all. It's actually exceeded everything, you know, that I ever thought it could have been in the amount of time that it's, I've had it up and running. So thank you very much. Anyone that's been thinking about it, jump in the link below in the description. That'll take you over to the Patreon. Now, there is three tiers. The lowest tier is 5 bucks a month, 60 bucks a year. The amount of content I'm starting to put out, it's pretty good value really. So, And uh, everyone that is already on Patreon will know, but I've just put in a new tier, it's called the Hunting Mentor. So there's three positions available at any one time. At the moment, there's already one that's taken it up. So there's two positions left at the moment. And basically, that's just for anyone that's out there that wants to hunt, wants to learn how to hunt, but doesn't have a circle of people to go to. I'm going to be that person, so you're going to get my mobile phone number. Uh, the bloke that's already signed up has, um, we've already had a good chat, we sort of worked out what we need to achieve, what he wants to achieve, and, and how we're going to go about it. And um, it's, I think it's going to be a really good thing, so jump over there, check it out. If it's your thing, sign up, and uh, I'll be chatting to you as soon as you do. So anyway, we better get out there and look for a deer. So we've got my bino case and um, Anthony's and what I did notice over the week is mine pulls down and stays down because of the magnets in there and you can just leave it like that while you're hunting whereas this one makes that noise every time he puts them back. Now, I know you could probably try and make it quiet, but it doesn't happen very easily. And it's annoying. Just something to think about. So, we're just last morning packing up and um, had brekkie, and we're just going to spend the morning getting out. But. Just wanted to talk a little bit about what you can achieve. You see the little machine there? It's Anthony's CPAP machine, packed it in. So don't think that because you've got a few little things going on that you can't get out there and, and explore this bloody awesome country we've got. Get out there and do it. There's always a way. So it's just what you want to do. There's always a way you can make it happen. March out. It's a nice overcast morning to make it a little bit more bearable punching up this big hill but yeah anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it don't forget to make a comment hit the thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already cheers see you on the next one feeling the burn yet anthony oh, a bit <laughs> see the feeling the way to the antlers <laughs> fully up with water as well so
Yeah, I wouldn't want any more weight. <laughs> We've got plenty of elevation now, which is good. 